Hello everyone, it is Miss Dana Ashley. As you know, they are pulling the plug on many channels as we speak. So see down in the description box, some lists of backup channels that have been deleted down below, including mine as a backup. Also see down there a link to my new website that is about to launch. Finally, I wanted to say about this video, there is a lot of info that is sort of hidden visually within this thing. So if you're not looking at the screen, you're likely going to miss a good bit. This is what we have to do to get our messages out these days. And I just wanted to say, even if you don't agree with my politics, just keep on watching it. Because if you don't, you're really going to miss some really important warnings and info that could help you and your family a lot. That's all. Now onto the video. Well, hello, YouTube family. It is me, Miss Dana Ashley, and I really need to stop saying YouTube family because you know what? It ain't YouTube. It's they tube. Can I get an amen? Man, they are just on a mission. I did say about three months ago, we had three months left. I'm here, miraculously here, skin of my teeth, probably because I haven't put out a lot of videos because I'm trying to get the heck out of Dodge. As you can see, I'm still in my place in Southern Cali, hoping to be hitting the road pretty soon. Today, I just wanted to check in with you guys, and I just wanted to continue to encourage you all to get ready. Things are really lining up. I'm sure most of you who watch this kind of channel already know that. All the while, I still see so many completely asleep around me. We went to, um, I went, there's a restaurant here that's actually a sports, you know, a sports barish kind of place with TV screens and whatnot. And they had these screens up with the sports, right? They're still, it's outside, but they still have all the big screen TVs around. And I saw that the teams are back on, but there's like cardboard cutouts of people in the stands. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is like the Twilight Zone. I, I'm... No wonder, you know, people have their, they got their sports, they got their Hot Pockets, they've got their whatever else, and yeah, they think as soon as the election over, everything's just going to be fine, and I got to tell you guys, they're, they're putting the cardboard people in the stands to let you know that no, it's not normal, and it's never going to go back to be completely normal, because that's not the plan, you know, and I just see so many people that are blindly putting their faith in men in governments, in man-made systems, in parties, if you know what I'm saying. I just wanted to show you guys something really quick. Check this out. So this is the Church of Satan. Wow. Churchofsatan.com. We have a hierarchy in the Church of Satan. Who knew, right? Guess it shouldn't surprise us, knowing what we know about these, uh, these clubs with different degrees of membership. So apparently there are five degrees. The first one is a registered member, no degree. Then we have the active member, Satanist. There you go. We have the witch and warlock in the second degree. Then you go to the priestess or priest. Then you have the magister, which is the fourth degree. And finally, the last and final degree from the churchofsatan.com is none other than the MAGA. Yeah. M A. GA. Mm -hmm. They got to tell you what they're doing, guys, you know, and that's going to upset a lot of you. And you got to ask why. Why would that upset you? I would be grateful that the enemy is required to tell us what he is doing in the words that he chooses. Now, having seen the theme of the Trump administration, as you all know, making America great again from the beginning, having been the person that has come out on YouTube four years ago and started with my video saying, hey, you guys, America is the whore in Revelation 17, 18, Jeremiah 15, 51, and she's not got a very good future lining up for herself. That America is the great whore that rides the beast of Revelation 17 and 18. I will tie in the warnings of multiple prophets from Old and New Testament that also warned of this future Babylon's fall. I've talked about it a lot, and so it's not difficult to see that when you have someone who is being propped up as the person 
who's going to make America great again, turn the place around to be the place that I guess everyone thought that it should have been or how it was before. Makes sense, right? You're going to have it fall on the watch of someone who is the type of person that they want to discourage the rest of the world from being like, aka a Christian nationalist. Isn't it obvious? Now, why that upsets a lot of you is because you have seen Trump be slammed in certain aspects of the mainstream media, while in other aspects of mainstream media, you're seeing a more empathetic side. Now, just think about that. Both sides are mainstream media. There is no mainstream media that is telling you what I am saying, which is that both sides are designed for implosion. You're not really supposed to have faith in either side, ultimately, which is why opposing Trump, you have someone like this. Confidence. I've got a lot of thanks to give out here. First and foremost to my perfect wife, Stephanie. When I sit on the stand and it get hot, I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. Play the radio, make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night, the, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear words. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Over here. That's it. Keep it over there. Right next to me. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, nice to see you guys. Remember. I got in trouble when we were running against the senator who was a Mormon, the governor, okay? So don't assume that just because I'm going to point out a few unfavorable truths about Trump that I support the left far from it. That's the kind of thinking that happens when we are successfully programmed with the left-right paradigm. I'm telling you not only is the whole system intentionally broken, but it's been corrupted from its beginning because it was designed to fail. If Jesus told Pilate that my kingdom is not of this world, then why would his kingdom be of this world 2,000 years later? We are to be in this place, not of this place, and those who insist on defending the world and those who refuse to see the reality of what Trump could be potentially used for, those who refuse to see the reality of what America has been used for and what we have done, are in for a sad reckoning. You're putting a political party and patriot programming before your creator. So if you're asking, well, then who do we vote for? You still don't get it. If voting mattered, Lady Gaga... If you want to change this system, if you want this country to be different than it is right now, you have got to participate in this election. Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Phil wouldn't keep insisting that you must go do it. Just listen to what this computer programmer admits under oath that he was hired to do, to write code that covertly rigs the outcomes of elections, ensuring the rigors desired results, regardless of who the majority of people actually voted into office. My name is Clinton Eugene Curtis. And what is your profession? I'm a computer programmer. Would you please speak into the microphone so the audience can hear your testimony? I'm a computer programmer. Mr. Curtis, are there programs that can be used to secretly fix elections? Yes. How do you know that would be the case? Because in October of 2000, I wrote a prototype for President Congressman Tom Feeney at the company I worked for in Oviedo, Florida, that did just that. And when you say just, did just that, it would rig an election? It would flip the vote 51-49 to whoever you wanted it to go to and whichever race you wanted to win. And would that program that you designed be something that elections officials that might be on county boards of elections could detect? They'd never see it. 
so when Trump wins, it won't be any accident, and it won't be stolen. Even though presenting that way would surely be a perfect way to ensure more destruction to our nation, make no mistake, his win will be on purpose, to ensure the highest amount of chaos and intentional sabotage. This isn't even about Trump. He's not the one who chose how he would be used. He didn't even choose Make America Great Again any more than he chose for MAGA to be the Church of Satan's highest rank. This is about the sad fact that it's time for every American to realize our country was never what we were taught it was from the beginning. Those of us who supposedly believe in the teachings of Jesus and his word should know God very purposefully brought his people out of Egypt. Yet every one of us have seen that huge pyramid printed on the side of our $1 bill and we think nothing of it. We learned about our beloved founding fathers and know the Washington Monument in D.C., yet we never questioned that it is, in fact, the largest Egyptian obelisk in the entire planet. D.C., full of her pagan symbols, gods, goddesses, and the United States, full of her modern-day idols, shameless pride, and huge industries of porn and blatantly false prophets, they've all been used greatly to bring the whole world down because she has been a fantastic continuation of spiritual Egypt, the whore that has been openly riding the beast that hates her for a very long time. All that said, I completely understand and empathize with many who want to have hope, those whose hope isn't based on pride or blind patriotism, but in a deep desire for a better place for our children. I would love that myself. But wanting a future for your children doesn't mean that we willingly fall for whatever version of one-sided truth that Fox News, started by admitted globalist Rupert Murdoch, spins, or that we fall for Q's constantly changing goalposts of how the swamp is just about to be drained. But let me just sincerely ask you this. How can Trump, a man who was financially rescued by this group, look at your screen now because I can't say the name out loud, these international bankers with deep investments in CHINA with near ancient lineage to the unholy Roman Empire. How can one who was completely bailed out by the Red Shields only serve to make America great? Yeah, if you can answer that, I'm listening. In the 80s, Trump's Las Vegas investments were due for foreclosure and rescued by none other than New York City-based Roth, mm, Child and Co. lead bankruptcy guy Wilbur Ross. He bailed Trump out, and Ross is now a multi-billionaire that was subsequently tapped by Trump to be the United States Secretary of Commerce. Get a look at this mug. Hmm? Doesn't get any more globalist than the Red Shields. I'm just saying. Here's the thing. We do not serve a god of confusion or hypocrisy. So why is it that people so want to believe that things could be different that they're willing just to put on blinders to keep from acknowledging open confusion, open hypocrisy that is presented to their faces and yet they claim is of God? Now that is what I have a very big problem with. I will say this, Hillary Clinton has to go to jail, okay? She has to go to jail. I think she should be in jail for what she did with her emails, okay? And I'll tell you what, I didn't think I'd say this, but I'm going to say it. But if I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception, there has never been anything like it. And we're going to have a special prosecutor because you know what? People have been, their lives have been destroyed for doing one-fifth of what you've done. And it's a disgrace. And honestly, you ought to be ashamed of Secretary, yourself. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> Introduce to you the president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. There he is. He said in American political history. Thank you very much. I've just received 
a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard-fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Hillary has worked very long and very hard over a long period of time. And we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. I mean that very sincerely. Their lives have been destroyed for doing one-fifth of what you've done. And it's a disgrace. And honestly, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Secretary. And we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. That plays great before the election. Nah, we don't care. Autism has become an epidemic. 25 years ago, 35 years ago, you look at the statistics, not even close. I want smaller doses over a longer period of time. Today, I want to update you on the next stage of this momentous medical initiative. It's called Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. A massive scientific, industrial, and logistical endeavor unlike anything our country has seen since the Manhattan Project. Today, my administration released our detailed national vaccine distribution plan, and uh, that includes a plan to ensure that we swiftly deliver the vaccine directly to America's senior citizens in nursing homes, and it's uh, all set. We have our military lined up, everybody's lined up. You really could say that nobody's seen anything like we're doing, whether it's ventilators or testing. Nobody's seen anything like we're doing now within our country since the Second World War. Incredible. To get the vaccine into the hands of American people, we're fully mobilizing the awesome power of American industry and also our military. And we'll be able to distribute at least 100 million vaccine doses by the end of 2020, and a large number much sooner than that. This is the largest, fastest, and most advanced vaccine distribution effort in American history. Just back to the 2016 elections, I would rather my cat and Roscoe is pretty cool. But I would rather my cat be president than Hillary Clinton. And I actually mean that. We would be better without a president at all than having someone like her. And beyond even right and left, I've never been one to believe in either side of things for quite some time. But I did at one point deeply believe in the Constitution. But I feel like I've now been shown that it's really not about following governments. It's not about following systems. Nowhere did Jesus say to pledge the allegiance to a flag. All the while, you guys should know it. Some of God's greatest, most protective and loved men, like Daniel, put an alliance in. Why? Because he disobeyed the government. Jesus was slain in part for his own forms of civil disobedience, right? For calling the elders of his own faith a brood of vipers and, and worse. So let's be clear, at some point, civil disobedience will be necessary as a part of our getting through all this. We are ultimately going to have to say no to something that our government says yes to, and that is a mark that will enable us to buy or sell. Now, what in the world makes you think that the enemy plays fair? That the enemy wouldn't attach it to something like CV19 papers or some such thing? he would. And what's worrisome to me is that so many people, I'm not even worried about the left, all right? I'm not even worried about people who don't have ears to hear. So many people, however, who call themselves believers are just blindly listening to a man and relying on the outcome of elections and pointing to a political side as the enemy rather than digging in and attempting to hear the voice of your creator. And that is a problem. And that is exactly where they want you and why they have gone to all the trouble of making Trump look like an outsider. It had to be believable, and it is, you know? So in order to accept that pretty big pill, right, to swallow for a lot of people, you have to basically accept that our entire history, everything we were taught as truth in school, that was painted to serve the controllers, not us. They had to tell us about the truth of our founding rather than looking at the fact 
that Washington, D.C. government, the architecture itself, it was seated by Rome. And the pagan gods and Egyptian temples all over D.C. are there to prove it to you. Did they tell you that in school? No. The pyramids on the streets, the upside down five-pointed stars, the all-seeing eye at the top of the pyramid, is the White House at the top? No, a temple, right? A temple whose stained glass says within it, order out of chaos. This is the ultimate destiny of the United States and to those who are truly in power, not the politicians. Come on, guys, let's quit falling for this. They're just puppets, and they have been for a very long time. But back to Trump for just a moment. By far, my least favorite of all his orders includes the state of emergency for CV-19 that was engaged when? On March, Friday the 13th. Now, how many of you realize the origins of the dread behind Friday the 13th? That it is linked to the crucifixion of Jesus. Philip Stevens Jr., renowned anthropologist, he studies the origin of cultures and superstitions. He says the Western culture of fear around Friday the 13th originates from the biblical recalling of Jesus' Last Supper and crucifixion, in which there were 13 individuals present in the upper room on the 13th of Nisan, Thursday the night right before his death on Friday. And that's the date they choose to start the CV-19 madness? Really? Really, that as an aside, let me take a second to point out something very interesting here, that this CV strain, this event, and the dreams and visions that are showing up to point what's coming as a result seem to me to be perfectly reflected in part of Revelation chapter 6 in what's often called the four horses of the apocalypse. Now, the description and the events associated with, with four horses parallels what Jesus warned about in Revelation 24 regarding the beginnings of sorrows that must happen before he returns. Four horse events describe the unveiling of physical trials that will come over the people of the entire earth. They are the events that are brought in by spiritual tactics of the enemy include the second red horse to, quote, take away peace from the earth and to make men slay one another. Don't know about you, but that sounds even more like civil W-A-R to me than just normal, W-A-R, deep inflation to the point of making food unaffordable, printing money out of nothing will do that, check. There were horses relating to famine as well as pestilence. Now remember, at the opening scene of the four horses, the rider on the first white horse was given a crown and had a bow. Now, this is not Jesus who comes later on, also who's on a horse and holding an iron scepter with King of Kings and Lord of Lords written on his robe. But this white horse indicates the spiritual beginnings of the unfolding of the short time of rule of the Antichrist over the people on the earth. Now, however, it is terribly interesting to me that this first writer was given a crown and a bow, but had no arrows. Now, CV19 and the word C-O-R-O-N-A, can't say it, actually translates from Latin as the word crown. Scripture says that the rider on the first white horse, quote, he that sat on him and had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, have we ever seen more spiritual conquering involved on a global scale than with this CV strain? This event that literally translates as the word crown, to those paying attention, it's evident that this event can absolutely result in the fulfillment of the other horses. Financial collapse, great inflation, famine, pestilence, which actually only means mass death. And again, this is even considering that the rider with the bow has no arrows. Interesting. Sounds a whole lot like the first spiritual event of the white horse doesn't even have to K-I-L-L -L directly, but that it will be used to conquer and lead the other three horses even without having physical arrows. Wow. Doesn't even have to K-I-L-L -L, in order to be used ultimately to conquer, which is the stated goal of the first white horse. Now on the topic of K-I-L-L-I-N-G, when you consider 
that Trump, too, has openly supported fast-tracking the untested for human health consequences, F-I-V-E-G? The race to 5G is a race America must win, and it's a race, frankly, that our great companies are now involved in. We've given them the incentive they need. It's a race that we will win. My question for, for you, particularly Mr. Gillen and Mr. Perry, how much money has the industry committed to supporting additional independent research? And we're talking about research on the biological effects of this new technology. There are no industry-backed studies, to my knowledge, right now. So, essentially, the answer to my question, how much money? Zero. Uh, I can f so much only follow up with you, Senator. To my knowledge, there's no active studies being backed by industry today. Any? So there really is no research ongoing. We're kind of flying blind here, so far as health and safety is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This untested FIVEG that he specifically moved to deregulate and fast track and push into rural areas at the exact same time when CV19 was taking off, so most can't even see all the new infrastructure going up, and then to put the leaders of the various three-letter agencies in charge of ensuring its deployment, another military term. They must also cover every community, and they must be deployed as soon as possible. I just wanted to maybe wake some of you up, right? Like, last call, guys. This is really the last call. You know, they don't have blood-red MAGA hats for no reason. All they had to do to get most of people to just drink the hopium is to make him look like an outsider. That's why they've done it. He had to look like an outsider. They had to have one huge network dedicated to making him not look like one who's in on it. And that's all it took. That's all it took. And it's a little disheartening because Jesus told us, do not be deceived. It, the, the biggest warning about the end days was, do not be deceived. For many will come in my name. That's not just the Antichrist. That is people who pretend to be walking the way, but who aren't. They're everywhere. And sadly, a lot of them are going to be very, very confused and lose a lot of faith when everything that Q promised them didn't come to fruition. Yeah, so said the dryer, right? <laughs> and I have no plans here to try to convince the believers of CNN the truth because they just simply don't have the ears to hear and don't think that I do not understand the weapon for chaos that certain factions of the extreme left have become. They have been socially conditioned and in some cases even paid to become a tool of destruction for a Marxist takeover. Yeah, I know. Many of them are literally out of their right minds. But that doesn't automatically mean the only other option is the true way that God stands for. Don't let the insanity of the left trick you into believing that the other path is something he is behind or that will turn this place around. But for those of you who are supposed to understand the times that we're in, that are falling down on the job really hard, they're just watching their sports with their cardboard cutouts in the stands, pretending everything's going to go back to normal on, you know, November 4th, when that is not the plan. And I want you to wake up, not to listen to me, not to listen to your government or to any man, but to turn back to your first love, to turn back to your creator, to know his voice intimately. My sheep know my voice. Do you know his voice? Because it's time that you do. And this isn't a fun one to make. But when I saw that MAGA fifth level, Church of Satan. Anyway, just had to share this. Because I love you. And I don't need to be popular. I just want to get the word out. Outside of that, I'm just uh, moving forward with scooting out of here and um, been trying to get healthy. You know, there's probably a lot coming forward soon about not just only new cases. I would expect to see, I would expect to see people actually, I don't even want to say the word um, because you can't see any words here on YouTube now, but let's just put it this way, F-I-V-E-G 
has the capacity to cause people to not be able to breathe, not by going through their lungs, but this is a technology that essentially it works like a laser. And so maybe I'll supplant some, some video here of what it actually looks like as you're walking by. So if you can see people walking on the sidewalk, um, of course, uh, face detection recognition is not at all difficult anymore. It would be very easy, uh, mask or no mask, for these things to be able to lock onto your face and to cause the oxygen to be disrupted because it is not a mystery. 60 gigahertz impacts the oxygen molecule, okay? That's common knowledge, not a theory of mine, not some wild thing, it's how it works. And so if you're in an area in a larger city and you suddenly can't breathe, run away. Get uh, unlocked from that. Get any phones that you have turned off. You can block it. It's actually very easy to block this stuff. It's not like it's um, coming out in an ocean of waves. It's actually a laser. And so, and with the masks on, if your oxygen is disrupted under the mask, you can only imagine how crazy that is. I am trying to put together a video regarding um, what I believe are some testing that was done covertly on some of our children in schools. And um, maybe I'll put a couple of clips of that here. Every time I go to the school, I get sick. It starts with a headache and then you get dizzy and lightheaded. It's a bizarre feeling and nobody knows what's causing it. It is affecting our students. I have seen students um, can't catch their breath, have severe headaches. It started more than 130 days ago in September when the principal and another staff member nearly passed out in the main office. They were rushed to the hospital. The school was evacuated. The air was deemed safe. Yes, in case you're wondering what I'm getting at here, I'm reminding you that yes, America has had a long unethical track record of performing experimentation on its own people without their knowledge or consent, even as admitted in Wikipedia. We know that millimeter waves such as 60 gigahertz have been a decent part of our military defense strategies since the 1960s. And some think that these could be the forerunners of a new type of directed energy weapon part of a family of weapons which operate within the radio frequency segment of the electromagnetic spectrum and are thus referred to as radio frequency weapons. Dr. James Frazier has researched electromagnetic effects for the Air Force for over 10 years and he, like a small but growing number of weapons experts, feels that radio frequency or RF weapons could be the wild card in the ongoing arms race. You could have tremendous amounts of radiated power and uh, what you did with that power then is a matter of engineering design and what what your goal is. Robert Bass, a physicist and PhD in mathematics, is working on U.S. weapons research. He says that the Soviets seem to be ahead in a number of areas and especially in RF weapons. We are behind uh, the Soviet Union in directed energy weapons based on 60 gigahertz microwave beams, in directed energy weapons based on 60 gigahertz microwave beams. 60 gigahertz microwave beams. Dr. Bass and others feel the most likely form of Soviet RF weaponry would be high-powered microwaves similar to a focused ultra-high intensity radar beam. It would literally cook humans and knock out computers and electronic surveillance and communications gear. So I have no doubt that there is a good idea of what exposure to these MM waves could actually cause, but considering these mystery illnesses that appeared in various schools across the United States that these unwitting schools all desperately tested for air, water, mold issues found nothing. I'm just saying. These look a whole lot like potential FIVEG experiments to me. Joe Embriano, the YouTuber who first exposed this, stated that someone who worked in one of these schools was told to install this stuff out of the box. They assumed it was just a router and so no one had any idea what it would do. Now listening to these people's symptoms, these clips give us clues as to what they will do besides traditional symptoms that happen to also reflect CV19 like shortness of breath, and headaches that these kids had. They also report similar symptoms to the kind of symptoms we first saw in China, remember? With the dizziness, passing out in broad daylight in the middle of the street, even seizures. And do you remember that Wuhan China was a pilot city for its new FIVEG tech? Then 
you add the huge and dubious fact that the media, pre-programming, has already been planting seeds that it's suspected that CV now can result in new neurological manifestations. Wow, like brain issues, dizziness, and trouble walking. I can just hear it now. To me, this looks like a perfect pre-planned storm for the total world shutdown, dark winter, and subsequent worldwide reset that psycho nerds like Bill Gates and AI-worshipping technocrat Klaus Schwab seem almost gleeful to obtain. So we, you know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That, you know, I'd say is, uh, will get attention this time. There will be likely a resurgence of COVID-19 this fall. It will be greatly compounded by the challenges of seasonal influenza. We will have coronavirus in the fall. I am convinced of that. Without better planning, 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. Not to mention, it will perfectly play into the left-right masked versus unmasked subplot they've been investing in regularly. Going after the kids and the innocent, well, that would not be a new tactic and would only help seal the deal faster. In my opinion, that's easily the kind of tactic psychopaths like this will take to get the control they want. So yeah, I see this happening and I sure hope I'm wrong. But with all the precedents that have already been set about how little it takes to be diagnosed, this wouldn't surprise me at all. And I can see it working. Just know that if suddenly tons of kids at school suddenly are not able to breathe, God forbid, passing out or worse, or if people in urban areas suddenly start keeling over, don't go into a tizzy for fear for the CV like most others will. Who will assume it is indeed some new crazy strain? I'm just saying, could very well be millimeter waves. The wild of the enemy. Get your child away from any potential source. Was this stuff installed in schools over the long break when we were all locked inside our homes and Trump excelled the 5G rollout? By the way, FIVEG towers aren't big. They're small. They can look like this. It's not much bigger than a decent-sized router. First at 5 o'clock, some parents in Dewey are concerned for their children's health after several students had seizures and trouble walking and talking. I let my daughter go every day, and it's, it's like rolling the dice. She may wake up the next morning and not be able to move her legs. Uh, she may uh, be at school and have seizures. Uh, she may not be able to speak right. I see. Are you okay? Tara Madden says she hasn't had a normal conversation with her daughter Alexis since Wednesday. She says Alexis is barely able to get her words out. She shared video with us of her daughter's symptoms, trouble talking and walking. She can't walk. She walks like a toddler, learning how to walk for the first time. Doctors have diagnosed some teachers with an inhalation exposure injury and advised them not to return to school. Until the district can pinpoint the cause of the illnesses, some teachers say they just want out. Please just relocate everyone. I know logistically it might be a nightmare, but it's people the health is involved. Yeah, so you can only imagine if they suddenly say, oh, it's the new polio. Right. So let's not fall for it. <laughs> Let's just get away from any kind of new technology that may be in your homes. You want to have an older Wi-Fi router and turn it off and have everything hardwired to your internet, just like I have here. See this? This is a cord. That's how I get my internet. I don't use Wi-Fi. And you don't have to use Wi-Fi even on your phone. You can have a cord that will do that as well. Another video I need to make. <laughs> Anyway, and other than that, I'm just trying to bolster my immune system. Been using my sauna, which is really awesome. Uh, check out links in the description if you guys want to kind of be on top of your game for all kinds of things that may be coming down the pike with, um, you know, metals, radiation, and whatnot. But I guess that's all for now. I love you guys, and... Uh, Thank you so much to those of you who have written me letters, who have reached out and offered to share your bug out places with me, your homes with me. The response was rather overwhelming. 
And um, I just am regret that I can't get back to each of you individually. I am about to launch the new website where we will have that forum where hopefully we can all connect and talk to each other about where these places of refuge may wind up being able to line up, which would be amazing. Go to MissDanaAshley.com, M-I-S-S-D-A-N-A-A-S-H-L-I-E.com and register your name there so we can get you on the list to give you a little reminder when the website is up. I think that's it. Anyway, I love you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.